We're gonna melt some serious fat today with Bodyweight Tabata 3.0. Please be sure to do 1.0 and 2.0 first, because these are progressions, more challenging versions of those previous movements, which I know you're gonna love. This routine has three main goals. Number one, rapid fat loss cardio. Number two, full body core training. And number three, we're using HIIT here, high intensity interval training with the world famous Tabata protocol, 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off, fast explosive movements to really get the heart rate up, but require no equipment, right? This is what it's all about. Small spaces, melt your faces. Now, this is another beautiful flow I've set up for you where we're mixing between kind of ground-based core exercises and on your feet standing cardio exercises. It's a nice blend, kind of going back and forth to maximize intensity and manage fatigue to get a lot done in a very short period of time. Built-in warm-up as always with these routines, an instructional portion up front that goes right into a timed and automated follow-along. Be sure to use that timestamp for future repeat uses. You can jump right ahead to the follow-along, get right into your 20-minute workout, get it done, all right? Now, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Help us get this out to more good people like you. And the Maker Post Worker Report in the comments section below. A couple sentences, how did it go? What do, you, what do you do well? What do you do badly? You know, it's all good. It's a work in progress. Can't be perfect out the gate, but you will get better each time you do this. All right, guys, push yourself today. Put all your stress to the side and make a real change. Peace. The lateral leg swing. You've seen this before. Runners, sprinters, gym class. It's a great way to mobilize the abductors and abductors, inner thigh, hip. Also, if done properly, the way I'm about to show it, it can really help mobilize the Achilles, the calf, and the ankle, particularly adding resilience to the Achilles. Let's not rupture that bad boy. That's a way to get into a wheelchair fast. So here we go. We're gonna get as much hip extension as possible while keeping the heel down to maximize that stretch. Keep the abs engaged, and I want you to start nice and slow, okay? Inhale through the nose while coming across. <sighs> Exhale through the mouth while raising it that way. So you wanna feel the groin and adductors coming through here. Use muscular control in the beginning, and abductors or lateral hips here. After it's mastered with control, add a little bit of <sighs> ballistic movement, ballistic mobility, all right? One of the things that can happen if that Achilles is not used to that bounciness, especially in different directions, right? We're not just mobilizing front to back, we're adding right here, lateral and rotational forces to the toes, the feet, the ankle for more stability, more resilience. So 10 to 20 reps per side is excellent. Adding the slant board is key. You can also do it flat on the floor or use a wall or a pole to self-assist, but do it today. Wall climber. Now I'm gonna show you the easier option first. You gotta be able to get your feet flush to the wall like that. And the whole point of that is we can actually push into the wall. The push into the wall actually helps maximize hip extension or glute activation. So that's why we're doing it. It's not just a silly parlor trick. So I get locked in and what I'm gonna do here is pushing against the wall while the opposite foot or knee tucks into the chest. And the key here is if I don't have enough motion to the shoulder, so if I, I'm kind of dip, dip like this, it's gonna make it so that I'm gonna kind of bump into the floor here. But when I push my shoulder blades away from each other and protract, protract and get the stratus interior going like this, now I've got clearance. And I can pull the toes to the shin more and really tuck to the chest. So it's a great overall, like a lot of compression happens there. Great core activation and hip, total hip, glute, hip flexor. How do you make this harder? Well, you elevate the feet against the wall and you piss off the person you live with, okay? I don't care if it scuffles, I'm trying to get some gains. So I get locked in and I like to have the hands a little more in front of the face here. I'm pushing into the wall. Now, if I don't push into the wall enough, here's what happens. See that, I slip down and that's all sloppy like. So what you wanna do is make sure we're active, push in. Drive those hips into the wall. Glutes, hip flexor here, all right? Shoulders, oh, girls, everything, oh my God. Total face melter. God forbid you ever have to end up into a trench, but if you do, you will be ready for it with this exercise, plank trench crawls. Now I can go forwards, I can go backwards, I can go side to side. The big focus here is keeping the hips and shoulders square. I don't wanna be doing, you know, these crazy, you know, pounding out of control. I wanna be nice and smooth and level. And I like to do a little breathing like this. It makes between inhale, exhale every step. Now 
That one's gonna light you up, multi-directional for best results. Stabilize, we're talking shoulders, abs, hip stabilization, or the whole front side of the body too. Smoke you out, it's a way to make that regular plank much more fun, much more challenging, much more effective if you're ready for it. <sighs> this ain't your mama's side plank. We go a little bit harder with progression. You can't just do the same old body weight drill all the time. Now, we built up to this, but once we can do a regular hold like this, working the inner thigh and the groin, smoking the obliques, now we can add some movement here and train the glute and hip flexor of that down leg. It's called the runner because we're actually working your running mechanics. <sighs> Exhale forward, inhale back. And we can even come here and I can push against that knee to get more ab contraction, manual resistance, and then I can even build up. <sighs> add some speed to increase the cardio metabolic or go slower or more kind of grinding time at your tension and muscular work mixed between them or add the manual resistance, do both sides. And if you have a weak side, always start on that side, do it twice as often, twice as long to shore up that weakness. All right, get after this one today. I love the alternating lateral lunge. Now, side to side movements like that tend to be less stressful on the front of the knee than forward and back movements. So that's one reason. It also gives you a little more hinge through the hip so you get a little more glute hamstring activation as well. Uh, now, once you can do this properly, where you can come all the way down, notice how my toes are forward, hips and shoulders are square ahead, opposite toe is touching. It's kind of like a skater shape, a speed skater shape. Inhale down, exhale up. Make it harder by adding the lunge jump component to it. This really smokes the lateral hips, gets your heart rate up, and it's easy on the knees. So this is the type of cardio exercise I love to put into a workout, because again, I don't wanna make these bark at you. I wanna make these and these bark at you. Quads and the glutes, I, I like these. I wanna protect these. This movement will help you do that. Woo wee! You know what they say, slow feet don't eat. We're gonna work those fast feet drills now. We're gonna challenge your breathing too, because breath drives movement and the speed with which you do these drills will dictate the breathing strategy, but it's all four, four. Four steps or contacts, inhale, four steps or contacts, exhale, and you repeat that cycle for time. Now there's three drills we're gonna mix between what's called a complex. You just flow between these options. So the first one is double fast feet. So balls of the feet, knees soft, you know, nice and bouncy, all right? Now, there's alternating fast feet, faster and more rhythmic here, right? So, there's also high knees, get some level change, work the hip flexors more, okay? So, it's gonna get your mind engaged, it's really gonna challenge your diaphragm and lungs, but if you can get better breathing, you won't get as cardiovascularly challenged or taxed, which means you can work harder for longer, take uh, less rest between sets, all that good stuff. So lock in the breathing, get the cardiometabolic benefits too, be less fatigued, more energized. The hollow rock. Now, we have to make sure that we flatten that lower back and keep it there and master this original hollow body shape first. What we're doing here is adding some movement while maintaining tight total body tensioning. So we don't wanna lose the shape, and we don't wanna hyperextend the back. So here we go. Start nice and slow, rolling from hips to shoulders. I'm gonna inhale back, exhale forward, kinda of get into that kind of boat or V, sit position here, and you can pause to make it more challenging. Now you really wanna, you really wanna smoke those abs. Come back here, show yourself you can own this position, pointing the toes, extending the arms with the, with the back flat, and then, As the limbs extend away, your spine wants to extend more, so those abs have to work hard to pull it in tight. This is an intense abs exercise, it's advanced. Master the basics first, but this will smoke you out fast. <sighs> Seesaw lunge, my favorite lunge variation, a combination reverse and forward lunge. What you do here is one foot never leaves the floor, all right? So it's a big challenge, it's also a way to kind of access 
a walk-in lunge type feel, but in small spaces when you don't have the ability to go all over the place. Now, here's how I make this twice as effective. One, I put my foot onto a slant board. When I'm coming back, or this is the lead leg, it actually gets me more low quad stress, I get more range of motion, I get more movement through the hip and the knee. When I come forward, exhale going forward, inhale coming down, I get more back toe involvement, so I get to strengthen my feet and my toes more. Now here's another option. This will make it feel like I'm holding 50 pound dumbbells. So the benefit to the slant board, see I'm actually in space, a one-legged balance support. Don't just dangle here, watch what I do. I push away, I hip hike. And now I can actually mobilize the hip capsule and really strengthen the pelvic area. I'm going to inhale down. Come up, down, pulse. Three to five pulses there and I would go inhale down. Come forward. Come back, repeat for time. This feels amazing in a real challenging way. A lot of pump, a lot of stability. And again, when you spend time in the most difficult portion of the movement, the bottom, and you can go up and down and have control, that's mastery of the movement, okay? Anybody can go to heavier weights on an exercise. What impresses me is that body control, okay? Because then I know that you'll be able to do this for a long time. Now, if you can rock, can you also roll? Uncle Baby will test you today, my friend. Now, this is gonna challenge you more in a lateral manner, so we get more oblique going. And the big focus, as you can see, I kind of have this arm ready to kind of help stabilize me. So the tip of the shoulder still touches, but I'm maintaining the feet squeezed together in that kind of activation of the pelvic floor and the hips. So I'm gonna exhale over, inhale to stabilize, exhale back over. Now, obviously, if I wanna increase the challenge, what do I do? Arms and legs move away from each other. I maintain that flat low back position. If I feel anything in the low back, that means I have to come back here. My abs aren't strong enough ready for it. So I'm here. Hold it. And I'm keeping, see how tight the body is? Keep the body tight as one unit. Smoke out those abs, add in that rotation. Really get those, that love handle area. Now you can spot reduce them, but if you wanna train them, that's how you do it. Tighten up your diet and do some fat burning exercises on top of that or a full body workout. The beer walkout is one of my favorite core exercises. It's also really good for squat prep and working your quads. You get out as far as you can to really challenge the core. Inhale back as you come into the bear shape. Now, how can I make this harder? First, what you wanna learn how to do is get your feet close together. So there's more quad stress and less stability this way. So you do the same concept and going from here to here, walk it out. So you inhale going out, exhale coming back. Here's the most advanced option. This one's really tough. It's difficult, especially to get the arms all the way overhead. One thing I'll recommend is try to center your foot between the hands. All right, and as you do this, we wanna fight those tilting or turning forces as we do it. Initially, if you can't hold the one leg quad or one leg bear crawl, and that's not comfortable enough for you, there's no way to do the walkout, so you'll start there. From there, though, we get locked in. Let me have enough space here in my little prison cell. This is such a quad killer. It'll also add resilience to your knees beyond being an insane hip and core exercise. I'm sorry, hip and shoulder exercise. So get after it, do the best you can. And again, try to middle that knee between the hands. If it's like this, you'll be more likely to turn and tilt as you do it. Enjoy. I love combo ladders because it spices up your training and it makes you have to stay focused and locked into your workout. Keeps you on your toes. So what I mean by this, a one, two, three combo ladder. Our one is our jab. Our two is our cross, our three is our lead hook. And I actually like the band even for the lead hook because we're not trying to extend on the band, but what this will do, if you find yourself doing too much of a straight arm on the hook, the band kind of forces you to kind of go more 90 degree angle on it. It just keeps you really tight and focused on your hooks. That's a three, that's a four. We'll get there eventually. But the one, two, three combo ladder. I throw a one, I throw a one, two, I throw a one, two, three. A little slower. One, 
one, two, one, two, three. Now the beauty of this flow, right? I go from, when I do my jab, front foot to back foot, which sets up back foot to front foot on the cross, which sets up front foot again to back foot on the lead hook. So it'll seep you on your toes. Start nice and slow, all right? But then speed it up over time. And then do it for time, full rounds. This will light you up. You'll burn fat, heart rate and metabolism through the roof. And again, it'll really get your hand speed up. Enjoy. Look, any idiot can increase the weight. I'm not impressed. What impresses me is someone who can take the same movement or load and make it more challenging with other styles of progression. One of my favorite is complexity. You start with a basic skill and you keep layering intensity on top of it. So here's an example with the lateral three-step progression. We start here. Can you first balance and hold? Opposite arm leg, 90 degree angles in the arms and legs. I'm gonna exhale smoothly to do the three step and I'm going to inhale to stabilize and recover. And I can also make it smooth. Progression one, at a balance lunge. And inhale down. Exhale up. Progression three, add a lunge jump. Okay, that's enough. I'm old as fuck, but you get the idea. This is an incredible cardiometabolic challenge. Balance, agility, stability, mobility, full body. You're welcome. This, why am I giving this away for free? Go. Halfway. Rest. Halfway. Rest. Go. Halfway. Rest. Go. Halfway. Rest. Go. Halfway. Rest. Go. Halfway. Rest. Go.
go. Halfway. Rest. 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 Go.
halfway. Rest. Go. Halfway. Rest. Go. Halfway. Rest. Go. Halfway. Rest. Go. Halfway. Rest. Go. Halfway. Rest. Go. Halfway. Rest. Go. Halfway. Rest. Go. Halfway. Rest.
rest. Go. Halfway. 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 Rest. Rest. 
go. Halfway. Rest. Go. Halfway. Rest. 